Today, we are going to recreate the most hated pig in film history. Welcome back to Amour la Petite Maison. Join us as we turn this into this. The Bennett House from the 2005 Pride and Prejudice film, but in 12th scale, kinda. Learn with us as we recreate the home from our favorite movie. So shockingly enough, uh, this small scene in the movie caused a huge divide in the Pride and Prejudice community. For some people, this pig is the synthesis of everything wrong with the movie. <laughs> So our beloved pig here is not in the original 1813 novel by Jane Austen. Typically, Pride and Prejudice is a bit more refined, and some online have even claimed that this film betrays the source of material. And the Bennett family is not um, actually as poor and farmy as the 2005 film portrays them. They were landed gentry, meaning they would not have directly handled the farm animals, but the director, Joe Wright, felt it was necessary to the plot line. He wanted to show the messier aspects of life in the time period, in the countryside, but he also wanted to convey that his retelling of the classic was not puritanical and different, and that it was different. I wanted to take Austin out of that genteel drawing room setting, he told Hot Press in an interview. So the decision to include the emphasis on the pig's anatomy was made on the day they first saw the pig on the set and everyone was impressed. <laughs> impressed. <laughs> That's funny. The model pig here that I'm working with is Schleich and I found him on eBay. He is a 2003 retired four male hog. And what I'm doing is I am using mulberry paper to give him some hairs and some texture. And where I learned these techniques was from my friend Leticia in France. And I've been taking her online paper um, courses and they, they're amazing. I will link them below. And the name of her channel is Merveille en Papier. Yeah, I don't really know how to say it properly, and I don't want to butcher it. But according to Google, it's... Merveille en papier. So... I was close enough. Yes. <laughs> I'll link her below. I really highly recommend taking her paper courses. They're, they're pretty amazing. So... What glue are you using? I'm just using um, watered-down wood glue for this. So you're just painting on the watered-down wood glue um, and then sticking on the paper? Yep. Okay. In our unboxing video, we had unboxed another pig, and it was a female pig that I had picked up at, I think it was actually a farm feed store, and they were toys for kids. Anyways, I was just going to convert her to a male pig, but um, one of our subscribers, Linda Wargowski8176, she recommended a Schleich pig, so I looked on eBay and that's what I that's where I found him. Okay, so here I'm just adding the whoop, there we had a power outage. So the snow we we're having. So anyways, I'm just adding the um, fur to his ears around his nose and his mouth and then I'm gonna also add it around his little hoofs. Um, to give him texture and give him little hairs and just make him more realistic looking. And then um, once everything is dry, then I'll go ahead and add paint. It's nice to do a project that doesn't require so much detail work and you can just have fun. You can add fur anywhere you want, paint however you want. It's not quite so much detail and precision involved. Yes, and I think one of the keys to doing uh, any kind of like a project like this, whether you're building a dollhouse, furniture, or painting a pig, um, is just to relax 
and not take it so seriously and just have fun and enjoy yourself. That's the point, isn't it, of doing hobbies and different things is to have fun. I think some of us forget that along the way, especially me. I've been trying to learn how to knit and do all kinds of new things lately. And every single time, the instructor starts with, be relaxed, don't have stiff fingers, just go with your intuition and be creative and have fun and experiment. But we all want to make something that's perfect and we get lost in that. We get so caught up in trying to make it exactly the same. But I like how instead of trying to completely perfectly recreate the pig, you just thought, I want to make a pig that feels like that pig um, and add spots wherever I want and fur maybe where that pig didn't exactly have fur. Well, and we all know the star of the pig is his <laughs> manliness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it is It is good to just, uh, you know, relax when you're doing these kind of things. Because I think we are our worst judges. And we see all the errors and mistakes or things that aren't quite right. Um, where, when other, other people don't really see them and they don't care. The other thing about miniatures you made me think of is... Maybe individually with like up close camera shots, you can see it doesn't look perfect sometimes. But then when it's in the miniature dollhouse, it's in the room, everything comes together perfectly and it looks like an exact replica. Yes, exactly. It's like a magical effect. Yeah. So here I am painting the star of the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Bright uh, pink, just acrylic paint. Just acrylic paint. You gotta have fun, right? <laughs> it seemed like in every article about this movie, people bring up the pig. It's such a short scene, but it really had an impact. And some people thought it made it funnier and more down to earth. And some people thought it just made it disgusting and nothing like the other Pride and Prejudice um, remakes or film adaptations. Yeah, and I get that. And But the thing about this, this rendition of Pride and Prejudice, the reason why it is my favorite um, rendition of it is because the way it was filmed mm -hmm. and the way he, he portrayed them... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. They just seemed more relatable, mm -hmm. and it was funny. I mean, some it was. of the yeah, some of the things that they did, and when they're at the dinner table, and he's like, "Oh, potatoes," <laughs> and, you know, and the pig, and just um, the griminess of some of the house. I don't know. I just I love the way this film was portrayed. I think that. Um, the director, he did a great job. And I think for a story as old as Pride and Prejudice, you can have fun. You don't have to perfectly recreate it every time. And every single film adaptation, it has some way that it deviates from the book. It just does. And in this case, he got a little bit more creative with it and he mm -hmm. had a little bit more fun. But like I said, it's it's been around for a while. Why not change it just a bit, make it a little more available to wider audiences and not have it so like stuffed up have it more free and maybe the wardrobe wasn't perfectly time period accurate but i think it was mm -hmm. romantic yes i think it was i mean who doesn't like look at the outfits and think i want to dress like that yeah well and i think the director joe wright i am actually very glad that he felt the freedom mm -hmm. to to just do it the way he wanted to do it um because i think it was beautifully beautifully done. Me too. And I love the actors that they chose. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people complained about that and said this or that about it, but I loved Kira Knightley. I yeah. loved everything. I Everybody. loved Mr. Darcy. They were just so perfect. Yeah. It's one of those movies, like the first time I watched it, I was sad when it was over because I just loved the Bennett family so much. I just fell in love with all of the, the, all of the people in that movie, I fell in love with them and I was just sad when it was over. And even though they're, um, you know, they all the characters kind of have quirks about them that make them not quite so perfect, it 
that's what makes it more charming and I think the way that Joe Wright chose to exaggerate some of those features or make them worse than they were in the book or anything like that, um, I think it just made it more charming in the end, even if it wasn't a perfect adaptation. Yes, I agree. Okay, so here I just got these at, I think, Dollar Tree or Dollar General. They were literally, I think, a dollar. They're just little pom-poms, but it's nice because you can use supplies that you have around the house. You don't, you don't have to spend a lot of money um, when you're creating these miniatures or working on the miniature house. A lot of times we have supplies that we can use um, without spending a lot. And I'm just adding dirt. Yeah, so I'm just going to add a little, little, um, actually I'm lightening up the oh, spots okay. right now. I thought he was just a little too harsh. The pig in the movie, he had black spots on him, but they were kind of like, had a, like an overlay of white hairs over them. So they were softer. So I was just trying to soften the pig up, even though I did add more black to him than, than the pig in the movie. Oh, you have a guest. Oh, <laughs> there she is. And there she is. Perfect timing. It's like she knew. That's Now's chips. my time. <laughs> yeah, doing voiceovers can be interesting. You never know what special guests are going to have uninvited attending. And on top of that, it feels like you're on a stage talking to a bunch of people, but you are at home in a room <laughs> with a microphone. Now you're adding the dirt. Yeah, so here I'm just adding dirt to make the pig look dirty. Just to go with the, um, the griminess in, in the movie. Now that you mention it, I remember reading that Joe Wright was talking about how that time period in real life was kind of just dirty a little bit. Um, people weren't like bathing every day and, you know, there was just some dirt happening and some things like that. And so I think that he wanted to kind of enunciate that in the movie by making it grimy, even though people don't really like that or find it very appealing. Um, I think he's trying to remind people that the time period in reality was not perfectly pristine like we want to imagine it. Yeah, it'll be interesting doing the walls inside the house because they all they all kind of have this uh, this used look about them. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be kind of interesting to do because there's a lot of different ways that you can have that aged look because there's you know a decayed look there's just used look there's you know shabby chic look there's a lot of different ways that you can portray um you know that that look i guess <laughs> yes here they are here's our little pigs the boy and the girl there's the pig we just painted, and there's the original girl from the unboxing. She gave her a makeover as well, the same kind of thing. And here's the original that we were trying to recreate, the most hated pig. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.